All right. Well, welcome everyone to this uh, session by Learn WordPress. Um, this is best design practices to create engagement um, presented by Legally today. Um, and yeah, just to, um, to introduce ourselves, uh, my name is uh, Courtney. I am a contributor to the WordPress training team, which brings you uh, all the re uh, learning resources on learn.wordpress.org, including uh, sessions like these. Um, and presenting today is Lee Levy, and uh, she's with Next Graphics. She will introduce uh, herself in her presentation very shortly. So um, I will make this brief. Um, so if you haven't attended a WordPress, um, Learn WordPress online workshop today, uh, before, um, this is a space where everyone can learn together. So you can ask questions in the chat at any time. And if you know the answer to someone's question or have anything to add to the conversation, you can chime in in the chat. Uh, we will be saving questions for after the main presentation. So uh, it would be really helpful if you can preface your question uh, with uh, question in all caps, uh, that would help me uh, locate the questions to save for after the presentation. Um, and uh, so, as I mentioned, this and other online workshops are recorded and uploaded to WordPress.tv, um, usually within the, the 24 hours of a, a session happening, we'll have it uploaded for you with captions. And speaking of captioning, we do that, have the live captioning available here in Zoom, if you'd like to turn that on. Um, and lastly, um, oops, I just lost my screen. <laughs> Uh, lastly, online workshops like these are hosted by folks that enjoy WordPress um, and giving back to the community. So um, this is a community run effort to to bring topics uh, that are of interest to uh, WordPress users uh, to the rest of the community. And these are free resources that are brought to you by uh, by volunteers. All righty. And that is it for the, my introduction portion. Um, again, if you have any questions during the presentation, please put them in the chat and we will um, we'll address them at the end. Um, and with that, I will stop my screen share and hand this over to Lee. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Lee. It's good to see you and yeah, take it away. Thank you so much for having me and hello to everybody. Uh, Sylvia, I hope you're safe there, but please, I, this is great that you came to, to see this, but nothing is worth <laughs> the tornado. So please be safe. Uh, keep an eye on the watch out there. I see a couple of people from California, um, people from all over the world. So this is absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm so happy to be here today. This is the actual presentation that I did at the uh, WordPress conference, which was a pretty big hit. And so thank you for uh, having me here to share it with, uh, with more people. I'm very happy to do this. Okay, so let me share my screen and we'll get started. Just let me know that everybody is seeing the title. And the home screen? Okay. So my presentation is best design practices to create website engagement. And I'm gonna be sharing a lot of tips and tricks uh, to get clients to actually stay on your website. So with that being said, uh, the very first thing that I wanted to kind of ask you guys is while I am presenting, just kind of keep in mind a um, couple things to keep in mind, actually. How many of you actually know about the traffic you're getting? Do you know how much traffic you're getting? Um, have you given any thought to why you might or may not be uh, getting the traffic uh, and if they're staying on your website? So there's a good couple of things that you need to uh, keep in mind here. Um, and I'm going to get started. So give me one moment. And Courtney, for some reason, my next slide is not working. So I'm going to stop this for one second and restart it again because I it's kind of stuck on the on the home screen here. I'm not sure why. Oh, okay. Can you guys see it now? Did it move? Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, my controls actually flew off the screen. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm the founder of Next Graphics. I like to call myself the web design queen. 
I have 25 years of experience in uh, web design, mom of two teenagers, and I'm a cancer survivor from 2019. Uh, so happy to be alive and kicking and building many more websites. A little bit about my uh, personal, when I'm not geeking out, uh, I do Zumba, I do belly dance and photography, and I absolutely love to travel. So those are just kind of things I'm doing when I am not uh, in my geek mode. Okay, so this is a, a famous quote from uh, Steve Jobs that I absolutely live by, which is design is not just what it looks like and feels like, design is how it works. And that is 100% true when it comes to web design. Okay, going back to the original question that I asked, which is traffic on your website. Basically, the rule of thumb is that the human attention span is only eight seconds. A lot of people do not know that, but we only have the attention span of eight seconds for our brain to decide if we are going to do something, move on, stay on something. So it's very important to know that the average user will spend no more than 10 to 20 seconds on a website. So while they're using that 10 to 20 seconds on a website, you have to grab their attention in the best way possible. So the picture on the left, the picture on the right, I'm sure you recognize that when you see something that's boring on a website, you are obviously going to move on to the next one. And when something catches your attention, you obviously are going to stay on it. So what we're going to talk about today is the use of proper uh, design and elements to keep your clients engaged. Okay, so here is what your site needs to actually do in those four to five seconds. So the first thing is, who am I, which means a logo and a tagline that's clearly visible. What do I do, which is a clear clear understanding of what your company does, whether it's a service or a product, they have to be able to tell right away what it is that you do. What can somebody do on my website, which means to clearly state your object objectives, your goals, and what you expect someone to accomplish from your website. You need to tell them why to do business with me. So what's your uniqueness? What's your advantage? What's your selling point and why you are a great choice for them? So the number one rule is your website speed. How many of you, uh, obviously you get to a website and it just, you get that scrolling screen of death and it either doesn't load, it takes too long to load, or sometimes you even may get an error message, which is really an awful thing to happen on a website, but you have to make sure that your website loads fast. So technically the rule is your website should load in four seconds or less. 50% of visitors will actually abandon websites that take too long to load. And for any of you that know about analytics, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, that will cause a huge, what's called a bounce rate. I don't know if, uh, how many of you know what a bounce rate is or not, but technically the majority of people will leave a website because of it taking too long to load. So that's something definitely to keep in the back of your head. So a couple of reasons of why a website would be slow. There's a number of reasons. And when I get a client that asks me about why their website is so slow, we really have to look into a number of different things. It's not always just one thing. And the number one reason is usually a slow hosting server. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but this is one of those things where don't go with the cheapest hosting. I know there's a lot of websites out there that, and I can't name names, but they charge $2.95 a month or $3.95 a month, all these really cheap hosting. It's because they're loading thousands of websites on the same server, but that's not doing good for anybody's website, especially if you have a very large website. Um, so a slow hosting server, try to get a decent hosting package. Um, there's lots of them out there, but that's definitely one of the main reasons for a slow website. Second reason would be... Um, if you haven't optimized your images, a lot of people will uh, don't know how to optimize their images. So they take like their original images and they just upload them as is and they let WordPress size them down. But 
that can also cause uh, the page to load very, very slowly. And so you have to be very mindful about the images that you're using on your website, make sure they've been optimized, make, sh make sure they have been sized down. Uh, third reason would be too many plugins or plugins that are outdated or not updated. I see this all the time. Sometimes I log into a client's website and I will see 30 or 40 plugins in the back of that website. So there is some serious cleanup needing there because the more plugins you put in, plugins are a great thing, but you have to understand that the more plugins that you add into the back of the website, again, adds to the loading time because all these things have to work together with each other, the server, the plugins, the large images, et cetera. So make sure, go through your plugins, disable and delete any ones that you're not using. Uh, make sure that you update them because if a bunch of plugins are also not updated, that could cause many other issues that we'll talk about later. Um, Another thing that I see is too many elements on one page, especially if you have third party elements like pulling from other websites. So that could definitely be a cause of websites slowing down. It could be a poor quality theme. So be careful when you're using themes, especially like the free themes, because once again, if a company's not making money on a theme and they're putting out a, a free theme, there really can't be a lot of quality to it. So be really, really careful when choosing your themes. Um, and also malware or a virus. And I see that a lot. Sometimes your website was going pretty fast and then all of a sudden it's not. And it could be that you have malware or a virus on it. So all these things put together, uh, be very, very careful and make sure that you're mindful um, that your websites are uh, loading quickly. So let's talk next about how do you know if your website is slow? Well, some of this is going to be pretty obvious. Okay, um, checking your website's loading time. These are three tools that we can use. And this is a snapshot. This is not 100%, um, but it gives you a really good idea of um, your website speed. And you should test it, whichever one you use, a couple of times, because again, there can be different factors as to why a website is loading quickly or slowly. So if you try it three times and you get four or five seconds or six seconds, five seconds, you kind of have an idea um, of how uh, fast or slow your website is. So this is a really, really, really uh, three good tools. My personal favorite is GT Metrics. And the reason I like it is because it's a very, uh, it's a pretty graphical uh, situation where you see colors and numbers and you can actually kind of get a good idea. But I'm also going to tell you once again that they're not 100% um, accurate with the numbers and you kind of have to know what it is that you're looking for. Um, so here's a sample. And what I really, really want to call your attention to is that GT Metrics will give a letter code and a whole bunch of percentages and milliseconds. And I'm uh, focusing on what I circled here in the red. You want to go to the page details and look at the fully loaded time. That is the important number because you can have an A score um, and you'll have 12 seconds to load and that is not a good thing. So the A score and the 100% performance, that's a whole bunch of factors which you'll see a whole list of things and you may, may or may not, depending on your technical level, understand what all those things are. But as far as page speed, you definitely want to look at this circled fully loaded time. Um, I've seen people with a D score <laughs> for other things, but they have a fast loading website. So again, as far as speed is concerned, that's the number that you absolutely want to look at. Um, and going back to what we were discussing before about, I'm stressing this, that's why I made another slide about it. So once again, make sure that you delete unused, older, inactive plugins um, it's also a very good idea to check the, re, uh, the reputability and rating for plugins before installing. I have some clients that are so click happy with their plugins. There's, oh, this is cool and I want this and they install that one, they install that one. There's also a little warning that should tell you if it is compatible with your version of WordPress or whatever it is that you're using. Just be careful and check the ratings, check the reputability of anything before installing, because once again, especially some of those free plugins, they're they're a doozy and they can actually cause issues with other plugins as well. So I definitely wanted to stress uh, a little bit about that. So on the next slide, we're going to talk about speeding up a website. 
My preference is not to have to use a caching plugin uh, because if you did a website correctly and you used very few plugins, only what you needed, you used a good theme, you're using a good server and you're not overloading uh, heavy pictures on the website, you really shouldn't have to use a caching plugin. But if you must and you need to make it faster, these are uh, the four that I recommend. I've worked with all of them. They're pretty good. Um, they're all free and they all have paid versions as well. So those are three uh, to definitely keep an eye on. Once again, though, that's only if you need it. So let's talk a little bit about keeping the websites clean and simple. So I kind of like to compare this to a really messy garage. So me personally, I have OCD, but when I look at a messy website or a messy garage, it just it just drives me insane where things are all over the place and it's it's so busy and it's cluttered. And trust me, when a person, a potential client comes to your website and sees a big cluttery mess and their eye does not know where to go or the menu is not visible, they will not stay on your website. So it's super, super important to not have uh, a messy website and it should be configured nice and organized. <laughs> okay, so... Again, I love this slide because that's how a website should look to me. Nice, organized, clean, just like I love that garage. Everything's organized in its own little space. And your client's eyes should be moving left to right and down in an organized manner on the website. So the next thing I want to talk about, and this is really, really overlooked, is choosing your colors wisely. Um, there's a lot of science uh, and advertising behind the colors for the website. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on that one because I have this really, really awesome chart. And I use this when uh, clients come to me and sometimes they don't have their logos already. They don't have their colors picked out. They're not sure what color should I go for. And then the first thing that I ask them is, what mood are you trying to set? So basically right here, what you see is, what do these colors invoke in our emotions? So as you can see, when you're staying in the uh, you know red, yellow, and orange, it's more of the optimism, friendly, excitement. Um, and you know, it's funny because when you look at almost all the fast food chains, the majority of them do use those three colors. So that's again, once they're trying to uh, invoke the happy and uh, optimistic and excitement feeling, uh, with with their logos. Um, another thing is that's why the technology companies, they tend to go a little bit more with like the blues for trust and dependability and strength, whereas a lot of the toy companies will go with um, pink and purple, which is more of the creative, uh, imaginative type of colors. And then the blacks, the grays, the whites, the silvers, as you could tell, like some of the higher end companies, because it's sophisticated, it's timeless, it's classic. So once again, use this as a, a good um, color guide as far as choosing colors for your website. And it's funny, after this, people always ask me about their logos. Um, so yeah, I'd be happy to do that if you know anybody has any questions about that. So in saying that, when you're choosing your color palettes, I put a couple of color palettes together here. And the general rules for the color palettes are make sure that if you're going to use some bold colors, you have to use them wisely. So in combination with your neutrals, call attention to the areas that you specifically want to stand out, like with your call to action buttons. Sometimes try not to make the backgrounds too bright because it's very painful on the eyes. Uh, make sure if you're going to do dark text on light background, you reverse it on the other light text on a dark background. All too often I see colors fading in and that causes a, a problem uh, for the whole ADA compliance as well. Don't use too many colors together uh, that are of the same hues. Um, and again, just don't make it harsh on the eyes. Make it pleasant on the eyes. That's That's the goal here to keep people on the website. The same thing with your fonts. Uh, fonts absolutely have meanings behind them. So it's a really good idea to choose a good combination of fonts. So a couple of examples over here. Um, keep the number of fonts used to a minimum. Normally you like to try to use two, no more than three. One would be for the headings and one would be for the body. 
Um, and as you can see in the samples, it's just really nice when the headings stand out and then all the text is one color and uh, one color and one type font. Uh, use the colors on the fonts very sparingly when you're using titles and headlines, especially if you have a lot of color in the background. Minimizing the use of the script fonts because as beautiful as they are, they are hard to read, uh, especially um, if somebody, uh, let's say, doesn't read English very well or has a problem again with the visual. Some, some fonts are just very, very hard to read. So be very, very mindful when using script fonts. Um, do not overuse all uppercase text. Uh, sometimes here and there, it's great for titles if you want to highlight something, but some people just get so text happy with all the caps. Uh, it really shouldn't be used. And then ensure that the proper text is size is used because most websites should use at least a minimum font of 16 point text um, for your uh, for your body and then larger for the headings. So as far as what the fonts mean, again, I put together a little chart over here. So this kind of breaks apart the different kinds of the fonts. So you've got your fair, your serif uh, fonts, which are the more old and traditional. Um, you've got your uh, sans serifs, which are more for the stability. You've got your display fonts, which are more friendly and expressive, and they're more fun. Uh, your script fonts, once again, that would be something for a little more creativity little bit more elegance, and then your modern fonts, which are a little bit more progressive and stylish and bold. So once again, all this with your colors should tie into what you are trying to communicate on your website. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about your menu navigation. This is something I come across all the time, and I'm sure you know it, when you get to a website and you're on that menu and you cannot find something, I don't know about you, but that makes me crazy. I like it to be nice and organized. So you have to be very, very um, mindful when you're designing websites, whether it's for your for yourself, for your company, or for a client, to make sure that you condense everything into a good menu navigation with the right drop downs, not too many drop downs, not going off the sides of the page or having people scrolling all over the place. So we're going to talk about that little bit here. So the whole idea is to make sure that the content is easy to get to because once again, when you go to a place with a lot of signage all over the place and you're confused and you don't know where to go, in this uh, image, for example, they have their top menu, they have little circular menus underneath which open more menus, and then they have things just all over the place. So this was uh, an old client um, that we redid their website because literally people were bouncing all over the page and did not know where to go. So this is an example of some uh, tips for good navigation. Place the important pages at the very top level of the menu. And once again, use the colors that you choose wisely uh, so that you know, when you hover over them, they either highlight or the color changes or some way to understand what page the client is on. Because if you use the same color for everything, they won't know where they're on. Um, try to use one color for the top level, second color for the drop down level. And if you must have a third level, which on some larger websites is, is important, try to use maybe a variant of one of those two colors because if you have too many colors all over the place. It's very confusing. Also keep the wording short and to the point. Try not too much more than two to three words because some people almost put sentences on these things and then that'll cause, a, especially for mobile, that'll cause a major issue. So try to keep the menus very um, concise. So now let's talk about something a little bit more fun. So for those of you who don't know what the uh, hero image is, that is the top first uh, large image with the call to action that people see when they come to a website. This is prime real estate. So it is very important that your hero image is very, very in line with what you do and getting your message across with the right call to action. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples right here of what your hero image must do. So there's a couple of things, tell your story and it has to be able to do so without anybody reading the text. So when they see that image, they already have to have a clear idea of what it is that you do. You have to have a clear call to action and 
please make sure that you include a good quality photo because I have so many clients that give me cell images or images that have been retouched and they're blurry or they just don't really make sense. Um, I just saw the wording didn't pop up. So sorry about that. Uh, there's the wording for you if anybody's taking pictures. Um, just, you know, blurry and not good images. Again, that that's just a turn off to, to a client. So make sure that your hero image is absolutely telling your story. Get to the next one here. So I'd like to invite you guys to take the challenge on the next couple of slides um, that I'm going to show you, because this was a really fun activity that I did at an in-person uh, conference, and it was quite uh, funny to watch the results. So this is actually a client that we redid their website. But before we redid their website, look at this image for a couple of seconds and try to think what it is that this client does, because all it said is Lake Tahoe, Nevada, and California. So we went around the room and we asked everybody, what does this client do? So we heard a lot of things. We heard, oh, they're a hotel. They're a real estate company. Um, they are, uh, how, what else did we hear in the room? We heard uh, a travel agent that, that works in this area. We heard quite a few things. But the truth of the matter is, those were all completely wrong. So basically, this client, they're a photographer, and no one could tell that from the front image, and that's all they had up there. So a couple of little changes, which, again, made make or break your website, is now we changed it to say Nevada and California Photography, and we gave three clear call to actions that would take them to the right places and navigate the client to see what it is that they do. So this was... Um, a very interesting experiment. And we had a second one, which I'll show you right now. And this one actually drew quite a laugh from the crowd. So this picture right here, I asked them, what does this company do? And of course, 99.9% .9 said it's a cleaning company, but it's not. It was not a cleaning company. And we couldn't figure out why they had a huge bounce rate on their website. So here's what she does burn calories while cleaning your home. This woman came up with this amazing concept of putting fitness and cleaning together. And she was completely sending the wrong message by putting this image. So we went over it and I said, you're not gonna get people staying on this website and even buying into your fitness program if we don't change this up a little bit. So we got on her website, we changed the images and now we changed it to say, burn calories while cleaning your home with these images with a perfect call to action. And once again, we went from a huge bounce rate into people actually converting on her website. So once again, and I'm going to say this throughout the whole uh, slideshow, simple changes, simple changes, testing what works and what doesn't can make a huge difference because now you have this fun image of people doing exercise while they're cleaning or singing or pretending it's a mic, but they're obviously having fun while they're cleaning. So this definitely sent a much better message than the original picture. So we're going to talk a little bit now about your call to actions, which uh, we just mentioned in the hero image, because this is a very, very important part of uh, any website. So a call to action, what is a call to action? It's an invitation for a user to take a desired action on your website. They should be used throughout your website in multiple areas, and they should be attractive and tempting with the right offer. So I'm going to spend a few minutes now. Um, I've got two slides here that are going to show all the different types of call to actions you can use. So depending on your business, um, these are all amazing. There's no right or wrong, just what works for your business. So the free effect, which is, um, you know, try something for free, free download, 30, free 30-day 30 trial, sign up for free. There is your direct call to action, uh, which is your sign up now, join us today, buy now, add to cart, become a member. You have your visual call to action, which is watch the tour, see it in action, browse our plans, view portfolio. And then on slide number two, there are your detailed call to actions, which are like, have a live preview, try our demo, view our features, more information, 
uh, something that's asking for more, your contact call to actions, which are simply, uh, and probably the most widely used, contact us, get a quote, stay connected, send us an email, keep in touch. And then probably the most effective uh, that a lot of places will use is the limited offer call to action, which is the classic TV commercial. Uh, limited time offer ends in 24 hours, offer expires tomorrow. 50% uh, 50 50 sale for the first 50 buyers or order now receive a gift. So these are the most effective uh, for a lot of companies. Um, you'll see it a lot of times, even when you're booking a hotel, you'll get a little pop-up that says 50 people booked this hotel or something like that. So the limited offer uh, call to actions are by far the most popular. So be thinking about what works best for your business. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, the use of videos on your website. And this is going to become a big thing with Google. So just keep in the back of your head. I know not everybody likes to use videos, but it is going to become a really big thing. So as far as videos are concerned, this is a little fact I pulled. And just like they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but they're saying that now a video is worth 1.8 million words when it comes to getting your message across. So why include videos on your website? there's a lot of reasons to include videos on your website. So basically it increases your engagement by at least 10 to 20%. It is way more interesting than uh, people reading long, long uh, areas of text on your website, because as we all know, there's that attention span and nobody likes to read a lot. It gives a really good picture of your product or service. It appeals to people's senses and it creates that certain mood. Many times it can quickly deliver a message within 30 seconds, a short commercial uh, can tell people exactly what it is that you do. You can drive traffic to your website because if your video is also on YouTube, you can actually attract people to your website. It gives your company more of a personality. It makes you stand out from your competitors who have not done it yet. And it just, it's more memorable. So absolutely use videos on your website. Um, as far as the types of videos on the website, we'll get to that in a second. I broke this down by type of industry. I'll spend a couple of uh, minutes on this one because different businesses use the videos in different unique ways. So if you are a, a consulting business service, um, you would probably wanna create a video that would show staff in action with your clients. Um, show how you would create solutions for your clients. If you sell physical or digital products, uh, the best way to do it is to show people using your products, obviously. Show how great life is when they're using your products so they can experience it for themselves. Uh, show your product in action. Um, for your experiences videos, for all you travel people events uh, out there, this is amazing because you have like the world at your fingertips to create that sense of excitement. If somebody participates in what it is you're offering, uh, you can create an entire storyline or an experience by showing people having a great time. That's what that's all about. And then for the uh, restaurant people, which I have a lot of those types of clients, uh, you want to create a desire to want to visit your physical location um, focus heavily on your location, what it has to offer, create that sense of enjoyment. And if you are a restaurant, you just need to show your food because we all know that food is amazing and quick selling if it looks yummy and good. That's all you guys need to do for you restaurants. Okay, now next thing we will discuss is getting social. Um, so for those of you who are still scared of social media, it is going, if it's, it is a thing, you really need to be out there, uh, as far as using social media, because that's called cross promoting. So we'll talk about that in a second. So as far as cross promoting, don't underestimate the power of social media. You want to have your social buttons on your website, which leads to your, uh, social medias. And on your social media, you also want to be putting your website so that people can come from the social media to your website. So it's really important. Those are your social media icons, but I'm also going to discuss about social media sharing. And this is something that's very, very um, underlooked on websites many times. 
So they shouldn't overpower your website. You should uh, keep them in an easy to spot location, but keep it simple. And the reason I put header with a question mark, this was years ago, everybody put their social uh, media up in their headers, but then uh, the new rules are, do you really want people to come to your website and then go right off your website? So now they are saying it's the best place to put it in the footer. But once again, that depends because if you have a huge social media following, maybe you do want it in your header. So that depends, but whatever you do, just make sure that um, they do have an easy way to get back to your website. Um, sometimes you can use those floating sidebars as well, but it's really, really good and make sure that you are cross promoting uh, from both ways back and forth. Okay, um, next. <clears throat> okay, so, oh, and by the way, make sure that when you do open them, you open them in a new page, you know, by using the target equals blank. That way, if they ever do close out of the social media, they are back on your website. Okay, so social media sharing icons. When you're selling a product or a service, you uh, may have seen, or even for you bloggers, you may have seen um, the social media share icons. So sometimes that will entail uh, a little envelope or you can just email it, or if you wanna share it on your social media, this is huge because if somebody saw something on your website that they liked and they want to share it, that's incredible. I mean, by not having these share tools on your uh, products or your blogs or whatever it is, you could be losing out on somebody sharing it to their hundreds or thousands of followers and, and potentially a lot of people seeing it. So it's really, really important um, for improving customer experience, for increasing brand exposure, and just improving the reach to your target market. Okay, now as far as uh, I get asked this a lot, social media sharing plugins for WordPress. Um, here's a couple that I recommend, uh, some are free, some are paid. Uh, if you install these plugins, you uh, will be able to generate those share buttons that I just showed you. It's super easy to follow. Um, I can't really say one is better than the other. They all have different features. And again, some of them are, are paid or, or you have to pay for the upgraded version. So try these out um, and see what works for you there. Another thing we're going to discuss is chat boxes, another really great way to get people to uh, engage on your website. So four things that live chat will actually do for your business. So number one, answering questions. It will help clients convert faster. You can absolutely outshine your competition because not everybody is using them. And it enables you to work from anywhere pretty much, um, which is a really, really nice thought nowadays. Little picture just to back it up because I actually do that when I'm on vacation. <laughs> okay, uh, so now we're gonna talk about some rules for using some chat boxes on your website. Uh, Couple things that are overlooked. I know it sounds, some of these sound pretty um, obvious, but they're not always. So make sure it's automated when you're away. Because if you leave a chat box open and somebody does come on your website, there's nothing worse than nobody is there to answer it. So make sure that uh, you do have uh, one of those messages that pops up or you turn it off and it's on autopilot, whatever you do. Um, sometimes it helps to have some of the frequently asked questions in autopilot. Some chat boxes will actually do that. Uh, so like if somebody pops a question, like, where are you located? The address auto automatically pops up, or if it asks about, um, something that's standard information, hours of operation, anything like that, make sure that that's populated in there as well. And then try also to use a real photo, um, instead of, you know, an, an annoying bot because they like to know that they are talking to a human and it also personalizes it a little bit more when they know who they are talking to. Okay, for those of you who still don't know what mobile responsive is, you have to make sure that today's websites are all mobile responsive. That should have been done years ago, but it's there's a lot of reasons today why it has to be mobile responsive. So first of all, Here's an image of a non-responsive versus a responsive. And the general rule is if you, if your clients still have to use their fingers to read into it, to enlarge it, basically it's not responsive. So in other words, 
I'll give you a couple of really good reasons here. Responsive has to adapt to any screen size. It gives your users the best seamless experience. It absolutely will help improve the SEO because Google gives preference, obviously, to the responsive websites, and it'll improve your bounce rate. Because once again, we talked about that bounce rate. If the clients have to start using all these fingers to go each page and start zooming in, they will more than likely leave the website. Um, and just to throw in a little bit of humor, if that's not enough reason, we say, let's give them a better experience because in 2022, the survey showed that 75% of the Americans do bring their phones to the restroom. So you may as well give them a positive experience. Okay. On a serious note, though, Google will flag the website with that message that's marked in red saying right there, your page is not mobile friendly. And then a lot of people will immediately bounce off it. So you really should uh, take care of that as quickly as you can for your clients' websites. Now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, testimonials because testimonials can work really, really well for you. Okay. Just a little statistic there that one happy customer will tell an average of nine people about their experience with you. And then on the flip side, which we all know there's always these people out there that love to do that, is for one complaint will actually spread to 26 people. So we definitely want to take reviews very, very seriously. Okay. And there's a couple of ways that I recommend displaying reviews on your website. Um, you want to highlight one per week in a prominent area of your website, whether it's the home page, whether it's on a testimonials page. Um, the best thing to do nowadays, we talked about video before, is that people give special attention to video reviews. So even if it's with your phone, you don't need any expensive video equipment. If you have a client that's really happy with you, always ask them, would you be willing to do a 30 second testimonial and post that on your website? Because that is absolute authentication and it's real and it's not just a bunch of words. So people do love to see video testimonials. Um, have maybe a scrolling carousel of the testimonials and update them so you keep it interesting. Um, and never use too many. I have a client that puts 30 testimonials on a scroller. No one is gonna get past the fourth or fifth one. So make sure that Again, you're mild, mindful of how many people are going to be staying on the website and how long. Okay, so now we're going to talk about cross-promoting uh, the reviews. Uh, there are some plugins out there that will actually embed uh, some Google and Yelp reviews on your website. There's a plus and a minus side to using that, so just be very careful with that. Um, you can manually pick your top reviews um, and then just, you know, make sure that you um, put a few of them on your website and then you can always say, see the rest of our reviews and send them out there to Yelp or Google. Um, make sure that you encourage and ask for reviews from your clients. Uh, today, Google reviews absolutely help drive traffic to your website because Google is coming up with a new logarithm now where you have to have a minimum of 20 reviews to be relevant. So very, very important. Make sure that you try to get to at least 20 Google reviews. It's very important for your website. And as far as reviews go, always thank them with a response on your review. So when you do get a review, it's a really, really nice thing to uh, go back and say, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure working with you. Uh, believe it or not, a public review will uh, thank you for a client who just did that for you, it really does go a long way. And they do get a notification that you responded. So it's really important that you do that as well. And then on the flip side, because this is just as important, especially, especially respond to negative reviews. First of all, don't take it personally. I know that when you get a bad review, you know, sometimes people just want to vent, uh, respond with a kind statement because it shows a potential to other clients how you handled that situation. So even if it's something like, we're sorry you had this experience, we'll contact you, let's see how we can make this right. You know, we're sorry this happened to you, we'll, you know, contact you to, to uh, resolve the situation. And believe me, that does go a long way. Okay, next we're going to talk about um, 
offering rewards and incentives for referrals. This is something that maybe 10% of the entire population does, but it's another thing that does go a long way for uh, offering things for your website. Because who likes free stuff? Everybody likes free stuff, right? Chances are that you're already getting referrals uh, from your clients. So why not show some kind of appreciation and then boost your chances even higher? So I'm going to uh, show you guys a couple of reward incentives here. There's tons of referral programs uh, out there. They can skyrocket your business fast with the right incentive. Uh, so some of the best benefits in uh, offering rewards and incentives, um, you can attract new clients for a really low uh, pay for performance cost. You can also bring in high quality clients because referred clients will spend about 25% more with your products and services. And it's a proven track record of success that all the large companies are doing. So you definitely want to jump on board with that. So the next question is what kinds of incentives or rewards should I offer? So the answer to that question is you need to think about who your client is and what type of reward would they enjoy. So thinking about something that you can do for your clients, that's the best way to uh, come up with the decision about what type of offers and incentives to reward. So here's a couple of ideas. Um, I separated into the physical and non-physical rewards because again, everybody likes something different, but physical reward examples would be gift cards, like a store or visa card. It would be maybe a branded swag item. Uh, it could be a free product or service. It could be, we get back to food again. People love food, especially brownies, cookies, or something like that. Uh, for the non-physical side, you can do a discount or coupons for a product or service. You can do uh, maybe a free upgrade to a product or service, possibly offer a free subscription. Um, and some people just want a simple donation uh, in their name to your client's favorite charity. So all of these are different ways that you can absolutely make a statement with your clients or let them see that you are offering something amazing. And then I'm going to give a quick little bonus tip here because this is something that I just see all the time. We're all sending emails out, all of us. I can't tell you how many times I get these kinds of emails. So take a look for this really, really quick second and best regards with a name, you know, or thank you with a name. I see these types of emails all the time. And this is once again, such a wasted real estate because so many times when you send an email, people still want to know, okay, who's sending me this email? What, what is it that they do? Um, so use your signature the best way that you possibly can. Uh, this is super, super important. I'll give you guys a classic example. We had um, a huge conference uh, at one of my children's schools, and nobody really knew what everybody did because we were all new to the school. So I had a, a similar uh, setup like this where I had my, my picture and my name and my title and my social and everything on there. And it's incredible because somebody actually contacted me that I didn't even know from my child's class saying, oh, I didn't know that you do web design. I'm actually looking for a website. And it was just really, really cool. Um, so, you know, make sure that all your emails are branded the same way that your website is. Make sure that you put all that uh, on there. Outlook, uh, whether you use Outlook, Outlook or Gmail. I'm not quite sure how it works on Gmail because I use Outlook, but Outlook definitely has some uh, softwares that can connect to that and do this for you. Um, unless you know how to do it yourself, which some people do, so that's a lot easier. Okay, um, so as far as the email signatures, yes, can increase user interest by 25%. Um, here's the words, if you want to Google it, it's called email signature generator or create email signature, and you will get a slew of options on how to do this on all the different platforms. But if you're not doing it and you just have your name, absolutely make sure that you do that. And so these are, uh, my final closing thoughts. Just think about how many of you picked up a couple of tips here. I know I threw a lot at you and I have so many different um, 
uh, presentations that I do. So I kind of took a little bit out of all of them and just combined them into one. Um, and how many of these have you thought about, but you just haven't applied yet, but hopefully you will now. That's a really good thing. That's my ultimate satisfaction for doing these uh, these presentations. I get a lot of emails that say, oh, I, I took your advice and I did this and now I have this. So I absolutely love to hear that. And I love feedback. And so here is my final information. If you have any um, questions, comments, uh, feedback, please go to my website or just go ahead and scan that barcode. And I would be happy to uh, respond ASAP with any questions or comments that you guys have. Um, so that's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. You are welcome. Um, yeah, so scanning the, the chat here for some questions. Um, I'm not recalling the, the context here. Um, so Jean asked a question of uh, if you can give examples of third party elements. Um, this was pretty early on. Um, Jean, if you want to provide a little bit more context around that question. Yes. Um, I'll give you a minute there. Um, a question from Valerie. What if my website video had a 56% increase in viewers? Uh, the video is about local design services. Um, I'm not, not sure what the, what the question is, <laughs> but the, that's the question fantastic. Is. Oh, I, maybe mm. that's what she's asking is like, is that a good amount? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So it was design services, you said? Yeah, the video is about local design services. Okay, so especially if it's informational and it's educational and people can learn out of it, but that's an amazing number. So congrats and kudos on that video. Cool. Um, I think we have a couple more questions in here. <laughs> what are your thoughts about Gutenberg? <laughs> <laughs> No comment. <laughs> Please contact me privately. Um, there's certain things out of, you know, of politeness. And again, I won't say something is bad or good because I know a lot of people use it and a lot of people love it. Not my cup of tea, uh, but I'll be happy to discuss that. <laughs> um, are there any particular WordPress themes that you recommend? Um, there are quite a few good ones out there. And again, I would love to uh, do a brain picking session. So please uh, do contact me. Who was it that asked that? Um, Daniel, Daniel yeah. FD. Okay, so yeah, Daniel, please feel free to contact me. I will tell you what I use personally. I love Elementor. Uh, and Elementor comes with a free theme that is called... Um, yeah, it's, oh, it's called Hello. It's actually called Hello. And it's one of the first ones that will pop up when you're searching for themes. It's very lightweight. Uh, it's definitely a safe theme because they work hand in hand with, with the software. So um, I like the Hello theme. That's what I use in 99% of my projects. But again, there's a lot of other good ones out there. And my other fellow web designers may or may not agree with that. But contact me and, and I'll give you the, the ups and downs of quite a few of them. Great, thank you. Sure. A little bit more from Valerie. Um, she was wondering, she wasn't getting, seeing any clients still uh, with that 56% increase in viewers. Um, and so she was wondering how she could have such a positive video reaction without clients. Uh, and this video <laughs> is on your website. I just want to clarify that, or is it strictly on YouTube? Um, in the question, and she does refer to what if my website video had a 56% increase in viewers? Okay. Videos, okay. yeah, still no clients. Okay. Yeah, it's on the contact page of the website. So there could, once again, could be a lot of reasons for that. Um, and again, I'll be happy to take a look at your actual website if you want to just contact me and then we'll do like a little brain picking sec session, I could probably look at other things on your website. It's hard to say without seeing your website, there mm. could be some suggestions I could make for you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have here? Oh, Jean mentioned for site speed, number four 
was too many elements on the page, especially third party elements. Mm -hmm. well, what was that? Oh, so that was the question um, that she was asking about giving examples of third party elements. Um, oh, um, you know, a lot of times I will see uh, things like, uh, just for example, a video being pulled from YouTube, which obviously that's what you want to do, but then they have 10 more videos all pulling from YouTube, and then they have a chat box, which is pulling some code from another place. And sometimes people just have uh, third party elements that they embed or they're doing iframes, which that's really old school for the most part. But, uh, you know, pulling things from other websites or other locations and constantly sharing and things like that. So, again, all those elements together can cause a website to really go slow. Gotcha. Um... Did I miss any other questions? Um, so there was a question of um, about your your content. If this will be if this is shared in any way um, online, uh, we do have some some feedback that some of um, a lot of the slides weren't accessible, and so there were, were some issues seeing the content on there. So I'm uh, curious if there's a, a way to get the like the the text or the content. Um, yeah, I can probably get you something uh, right after this. So absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Um, and we're we're at time, but there's just one last question here from Daniel. Um, any tool that helps do testing or just do it live and see how it goes? Testing of what? We discussed a lot of things. Something yeah. Specific or... <laughs> what would you do like to test for, Daniel? Testing of see what works on the site. Oh, um, you're talking about oh, just, plugins. Uh, testing. Oh, well, if you're talking about compatibility, which I think that's what you're uh, talking about, it's a lot of trial and error, a lot, because <laughs> different, and sometimes this is, the, I love designing websites, but when it comes to the technical stuff, uh, big changes to the site. Okay. Oh, well, somebody did give a suggestion down there. Um, yeah. I would love to talk to you about that too, because again, there's certain ways that I can take this. There's no 100% foolproof tool. I found that a lot of times you just have to uh, be mindful from the very beginning, what you're installing, what you're using, and how these plugins interact with each other, um, as far as the speed, as far as your content, as far as, far as everything. It's, it's a little bit of all these components working together. It's like one big machine with a lot of gears. So when later on, when something does go wrong, we really have to start uh, disabling this plugin or enabling that plugin. And we just have to check and see what's causing whatever it is to go wrong. And then sometimes it's like, oh, it was this all along. So yeah, I see uh, Mark Andrews sharing a couple of resources in the chat. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Andrew. Um, we did miss one, one question from Ray. So thank you, Misty, for surfacing that. Um, Ray mentioned that uh, he has only been able to share his blog post recently um, to Twitter. Um, are you aware that Facebook and LinkedIn no longer allow WordPress to share directly from WordPress? Uh, no, because. Hmm. Just last night, I was recommending some websites to people as well. So as soon as I put the links in, it was taking them right to the website. Is there something I'm missing? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, one more context here. Uh, Jean mentions a site that she reviewed just um, had 14 Facebook trackers. It was a plugin to show Facebook feeds. Okay. Mm. God, I love it how everybody just like, <laughs> in and, and this is great. I want to save this chat too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, if folks want to save the chat. Uh, you can click on the three dots in the chat window to open up a menu to save the chat as a text file locally. Um, it's all one big learning environment and we all mm -hmm. learn from each other constantly. It's amazing. Uh, at the WordPress conference, it was the same. We were all learning from each other and sharing feedback. It was incredible. That's great. 
Um, yeah, I know that uh, there are some plugins that are losing, uh, like especially like Twitter plugins that are losing like access to like to the, the API basically. So I think that's, um, or that's why like some of that content hasn't been able to, to be um, brought in from Twitter um, and or sharing to Twitter. Uh, so yeah, that's unfortunate, but um, all right. So we, we're over time, but I, I hope we ad addressed every question. If we did not, um, you can reach out um, you know, through the meetup group or through the contact information that Lee shared earlier. Um, again, we'll be sharing the recording within the next 24 hours um, on wordpress.tv. Um, and that's it from us. So yeah, thank you everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Bye.